Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, split a string into the max number of unique strings. So a medium problem today, and I think that is appropriate for this problem. Suppose we are given a string like this. We want to know for this particular string, what's the maximum number of substrings that we could split it into? So this, this, uh, I think this, and this, and this. So if we do it this way, we just split this into five different substrings. And if you notice, every single one of these substrings is distinct. Can you split this into more than five distinct substrings? I don't think you can. Therefore, the result is going to be five for this problem. Immediately, if you are decent at algorithms, if you have a good understanding of recursion and the particular category called backtracking, you probably know how to solve this problem. Now, if you don't, that's perfectly fine. Don't worry, Papa Neat Code is going to show you how to do this. But I think the more important point before you jump into this, because backtracking is kind of like the brute force way to solve problems like these. Before doing that, we want to confirm that there isn't a better approach. Do we really need backtracking? Why isn't there a better approach? So let's think about this for a second. Well, if we were going to break this up, into substrings starting from the beginning we have to include this character into a substring so we have choices we have this choice or we could have done this or we could have done that and pretty much every choice there so let's say this string is of length n well when we start here we have n different choices that's how many choices we have now for each of those, like from here, like let's say that's this branch, and then we're gonna have roughly n minus one choices there. And from the next one, we'd have n minus two. On the last branch, assuming that this was the substring that we first chose, this would have just been one choice left for us. So that's just how to conceptually think about this in terms of brute force. Now, why is it necessary that we have to do it that way? Is there not a pattern? Well intuitively think about it this way we don't really know what comes ahead so you might try to be greedy you might try to say well i just want to split this into the maximum number of strings why don't i just try to put every character by itself and yeah that could theoretically work that would be like the highest possible result you could get but it might not work consider examples uh, something like this. Let's say we have A, B, C, and then we have three A's. Actually, let's make it four A's just to be interesting. So we start here. That's one substring. Then this is a second, and then this is. And then we can try to do this one. But somehow we have to recognize that we already chose that substring before. The easiest way to do that is probably with some kind of hash-based data structure, like a hash set. We can do that roughly in constant time. So every time we create a substring, we're going to throw those into the hash set so that we can eliminate duplicates. Not eliminate duplicates, but detect duplicates, because each of these should be uh, unique. So not super complicated there, but okay, so we detected the duplicate. So what do we do? Well, okay, let's just uh, create one of size two. Okay, that does work. Great. Now let's start back here. Okay, created one of size one. Wait a minute, that's a duplicate. Okay, well, let's create one of size two. Wait a minute, that's also a duplicate. So now what? Well, based on the decisions that we made, it's invalid. This one actually doesn't work. We were trying to be greedy. We were trying to be clever and try to maximize it, but it didn't work. So now what do we do? We got to backtrack and that's why you pretty much have to do this in a brute force way. Based on the choices we're making, we don't know if we're gonna end up with an invalid solution by the time we reach the end. Now, if we did not reach the end, we'd say, okay, well, this time we created one where we were able to split it into five different uh, strings. And so among all of the possible combinations, that's what our backtracking solution is going to do. It's going to try to give us every possible choice we could make. And among all of those, we want to choose the one that was valid and was the longest, like maximal in terms of the number of different substrings. So now you're convinced we do this in a backtracking way. 
well, how do you code it up? For the most part, it is a classic backtracking problem. There's kind of two categories that I think about in terms of backtracking. There is the case where you have like a yes or no choice where you include this or maybe you skip it. And that kind of recursion is actually easier. It's two branch recursion, so you don't need a loop. So that's very nice and elegant. With this approach, it's not the straightforward approach. I mean, theoretically, you might be able to code this in a way where you have two branch recursion, where I guess you could say that, okay, we're either including this into the current string or we are terminating here. Uh, but it's not really worth exploring that too much because we can do this recursively with a loop. And that loop is going to be what I talked about. We're going to maintain a pointer. We're here. So we're at i equals zero. We're saying from here, how many substrings could we make that are distinct? We want to maximize that number. Now we have choices. We could shift our pointer to i equals one. That would mean, okay, the next substring is going to start from here. And this was a substring. Or we could shift to i equals two, meaning this is a substring and our pointer is now going to be over here. And it's basically going to loop all the way up until uh, n minus one. And then for each of these, it's going to be the same thing. So if we were here, i equals one, that means we're here. Then we have choices that we can go to i two and all the way up until n minus one. And every time we do this, we uh, but before we do this, suppose from here, uh, we make this choice then we're saying that this is a substring. So if we're choosing this as a substring, we have to make sure that it's unique. Same thing if we had chosen this, we are going to throw it into the hash set, assuming it doesn't already exist in the hash set. If it already exists in the hash set, we're not going to go down that path. We're going to skip that path in the recursion. That's kind of one of the reasons that this approach, even though it's backtracking, isn't going to be super inefficient because we are going to skip a lot of these. And of course, the base case is going to be when we get to the end, provided we didn't have any duplicate substrings, we get to the end. And then from here, like this is the sub problem. How many strings can you get? Well, from there, we can just return zero as the base case. And then assume we did that. Assume we solved all the sub problems from here. What do we want to do with the results of all of these? We want to determine which one is the max. And to that, we want to add one. Why are we adding one? Because here we either chose this substring or we chose this or we chose this, et cetera, et cetera. And then we moved on to the sub problem. If we chose this string, this became the sub problem. So what this is going to return is how many substrings could we split this into? What's the max number? Whatever that is, we want to add one to it because of the original string that we chose, whether it was this one or maybe we did this and this is the sub problem. Same thing. This is one substring. So we want to make sure we add one to the max of this sub problem. So I hope this makes sense conceptually. Now let's code it up. So I'm going to have a recursive function. I'll call it DFS. I'm going to pass in two parameters. Uh, the main one is the index. I'm going to pass in a second parameter for the hash set that I talked about. If we really wanted to, we could skip passing this in and we could just declare it outside of the function, but I don't think it's a bad thing to just pass it in. So that's what I'll do. I'll start with the base case. If I is equal to the length, I don't know what I'm doing here, then we can return zero. We can't really form any substrings out of an empty string. And the way this DFS is going to be called is going to be something like this. We start at the beginning and we pass in a hash set as the second parameter, and then we return the result of that. So now inside of here, well, we want to determine what's the max number that we can split from starting at index i in this string. I'm going to declare that as a result variable, and that's what I'm going to return. Now we just need to figure out how to populate it. And we know we're going to do a loop of some kind. So I'm going to say for J in range starting at I and going up until the end of the string, because I represents the beginning of the substring that we are currently choosing. And this J pointer is going to represent the ending of that substring that we are currently choosing. We could choose a substring of length one. That's why it, J uh, can start at index I. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to get the substring. S starting from index i going up until j, I add a plus one just because that's how Python works. 
the ending index is non-inclusive. So this is a substring from i up until and including j, but not including j plus one. So this is a substring, I'll call it that. And what we want to do is call our DFS. So if I say j is the ending of the current substring, then I want to start my DFS at j plus one. And I'll pass in the current hash set as well. But I probably should update that current hash set before I do so. So I'll say current hash set dot add to it uh, the substring. And then after I'm done with that DFS, I'll clean up what I just did here. So I'll copy and paste this and change this to a remove. So I will remove that original string. But the problem is, what if that string already exists in the hash set? Well, in that case, we don't want to do this because that means we found a duplicate. The whole point of this is to find non-duplicate substrings. So I'm going to guard this with an if statement. If substring is in the current set, I could uh, say not in and then you know tab this in, but I'd like to do it this way. If the substring is a duplicate, let's just continue to the next iteration of the loop. Okay, now. The only thing that we're missing is actually updating the result. We called the DFS, but we want the return value from it. We want to take this, add one to it, one plus that, and we want to maximize the result. So result equal to max of itself and whatever result we just got over here. So now we're pretty much done. I'm actually not sure if we're missing anything, but I think everything looks in place. So I'll run this. And yeah, you can see that this works and it is very efficient. Let's quickly analyze the time complexity though, because while it's efficient on leak code, in terms of the big O runtime, you saw me do like the decision tree in the drawing explanation. So what is the total number of substrings, like the total number of nodes in the tree? Theoretically, it is exponential. And for me to explain that quickly, imagine we had something like this. What we're really saying is we're choosing where to partition this string, right? We could either put a partition over here or we could not put a partition over there, right? When I say partition, I mean like we split the string so that this is a string and then this is the string or we could skip that we could not put it there and then from here we have the same choice put the partition or not put the partition so roughly we have n choices we have two branches every time we make a choice so roughly that's going to be two to the power of n that's why i said you could theoretically code this up without a loop inside of here but the time complexity is not going to change now if that's how many times this function is gonna get called, what is the time complexity of that function? Well, clearly there's a loop, so we could uh, multiply this by n. I would also say that since we are creating a substring and then adding and removing it from the hash set, I mean, the fact, like the length of the substring could be proportional to n. So I guess you could add another n term here. So like n squared times two to the power of n, I think that's roughly correct. But again, this is like an upper bound and realistically, the code is gonna be more efficient than that. If you found this helpful, consider checking out Neatcode.io. There are some very, very valuable free resources on here as well as some paid resources, some very useful courses that I don't think really exist anywhere else like this Python for Coding Interviews course, working on some OOP stuff as well, and recently just added SQL for Beginners where you get to uh, learn all about Postgres. So you can literally learn about Postgres and then solve some practice problems directly within your browser. So you're not just watching videos, you're actually writing code and that's the best way to learn. And this is like a very nice guided format for you to do so.